Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. How nice it is to be in Brighton. Oh, this is where we come from South East London to relax. <laughs> and it does make you relax come to Brighton, doesn't it? Because you get on the train in South East London, you're all stressed out. And you get to Brighton, you get off the train, and you look down the hill, and all the stresses and strains start to leave you. Quite a lot of the ambition as well. <laughs> you're barely in Brighton two hours and you're starting to think, I'm going to go part time. <laughs> Very nice to be here. I, I actually come from the East End of London. Like most East End kids, I messed up my education because they left the gate open. <laughs> I went to a tough inner city comp with low expectations. In the third year, the careers officer turned up and he asked us what we'd like to do with our lives. The most ambitious kid in the class is Gary Utton because he wants to drive a van. <laughs> we erupted. We're like, you dreamer, Utton. <laughs> you is never going to drive a van. <laughs> you have to write to Jimmy Savile for that stuff, man. <laughs> no kid from this school has ever gone on to drive a van. <laughs> Come on out and you know why this school is here. This school is here to produce the people who carry the stuff to the van. <laughs> Seemed like a long time ago, my school memories. In my 40s now, getting tired. Don't go out much anymore. I've reached the point, if I queue up to get into a nightclub, the bouncer says, you can't come in. I just look at him and say, oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> My feet are absolutely killing me, they are. <laughs> and I've got a very good book on the go at the moment, I have. It's <laughs> excellent. Chesil beat. Because <laughs> I've got some young friends and they talk me into it. They say, come out the weekend, mate. Come out, man. Come on. <laughs> it's be mental, man. And end up going out with them. End up in a queue to get into a nightclub. A queue. They love the queue. Queue is a sign the club is happening, man. Look at the queue. <laughs> I'm in the queue thinking, we're never going to get a seat in there. <laughs> I bet it's noisy in there. <laughs> DJs don't like it if you go up. Do you do requests? Yeah, can you just turn it down a bit for me? <laughs> I to talk to my mate about his divorce settlement over here. <laughs> Can't actually remember the last time we ended up out out. You know what I mean by this, don't you? The fact that in the UK we drink so much, we have different levels of being out, different types. I'll talk you through them. You pop out just to go to the shops, you've got to get a couple of bits, and you bump into a friend who says, should we have a quick drink? And you go, yeah, only a quick one, though, because I'm very busy. <laughs> Three hours later, you're still in the pub. And then what happens is the evening people come in. These people are going out properly. These people are going what we like to call out-out. <laughs> now, the out-out people come up to you, don't they? And they go, you're going to come out with us? And you go, Pum. I can't come out-out. <laughs> I didn't even come out. <laughs> I only popped out. <laughs> the out-out people don't want to hear this. They look at you, they go, look, you popped out. You've ended up out. <laughs> you might as well come out out. <laughs> if you've got just the right amount of alcohol in your system, you look at them, you go, you know what? I'm coming out out. <laughs> Five hours later, you're in some horrendous nightclub. Sinatra's or Cinderella's, some hellhole. <laughs> you're drunk now. And you feel you've got a crazy story for everybody. And you walk up to people. You go, do you know what? I didn't even come out. <laughs> I only popped out. <laughs> now look at me. I'm out, out. <laughs> I think the reason you feel so compelled to keep telling this rather long-winded story, because you're standing there in your carpet slippers. <laughs> with a pint of milk and a cut loaf.
Now, we have dinner parties now. We invite our friends around for the evening, we have dinner parties. But sometimes we treat ourselves to a restaurant. <laughs> My wife's middle class. She loves a restaurant. <laughs> she likes the ambiance. <laughs> she would say to me within five minutes in a restaurant, isn't it a lovely ambiance? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've just copped for the price of the piece. She says, no, it's a lovely ambiance. I've worked out what an ambiance is. It's a night out without poor people, isn't it? <laughs> Basically, you're saying, could we put the prices up just high enough to keep the poor people away? <laughs> I want someone banging a couple of spoons together, <laughs> singing Mild Man's a Dustman at some stage, yeah? <laughs> causing an atmosphere. It's the ambiance we're looking for. <laughs> so, we're in this rather fancy French restaurant. <laughs> Something is ruining the ambiance for my liking. There's no tomato sauce on the table. <laughs> Setting up the very awkward situation where I've now got to ask for tomato sauce. My wife's looking at me, she said, please don't ask for tomato sauce. I said, I've got to have tomato sauce. I've just ordered the risotto. You can't eat risotto without red sauce. <laughs> it's too dry, all the juice has been taken out of it. It's a health and safety issue. <laughs> so I said to the waitress, rather stroppy looking waitress, I said, excuse me, do you have any ketchup in the building? She's looked at me like I'm some horrendous pleb. <laughs> she went off to the kitchen, I saw her making her way back with a little pot she'd rustled up. This big, about this big. Two chipfuls, basically. <laughs> She's tried to put it on the table and walk away like she's doing some sort of drug deal or something. Yeah, it's, it's all secretive. I stopped her. I said, don't go anywhere, love. Don't go anywhere. And I took a sip of it. And I looked at her and I said, yes, I'll have a bottle, please. <laughs> People of Brighton, you've been absolutely lovely. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Where you at?